Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Hello This to one more Blender Today. Blender Today. So my name is Pablo Vázquez. <laughs> my name is Dalai Felinto. And here we are uh, for a special, a special episode today. So... What is so special about today, Pablo? It is so special because finally we know kind of a release date. And for we have two big announcements. Mm -hmm. Two big announcements. So... <clears throat> you might have read the title. So the big announcement, the big thing is Blender long-term support, the famous LTS. Right. Do you want to go over that now? or I think that's that's more because if we say Blender 3 now, it's just uh, going to blow <laughs> people's mind. But because uh, 3 is a process. So, okay. The, the Blender 3 will happen sooner than expected. You know, Blender right. 2.2 was like 20 years. But then years. what happens to someone that is starting a project right now with 2.8? Do they have to switch or would that be a version that's going to be maintained for longer? They don't. That's the thing. That's oh my a, God. That's a catch. <laughs> so. Catch 22. So the LTS, long-term support, is something we've seen in software like Linux, some of their distributions. Like Ubuntu, for example, they release a new operating system every six months. So, of course, you can update, like for some companies or people, I don't update uh, my Ubuntu every year, every six months. I just update on LTS, which is every two years, and it provides me more with updates and security updates. So, I just get it, I, I just get the good stuff, and then for the other stuff, I can wait. Right, and for Blender, we've seen more and more a more stable ecosystem with well-established add-ons and well-established studios trying to rely on a version moving forward, but then always having to deal with the dilemma of should they bring it back, uh, like how, should they maintain their own versions of Blender to port back some security issues, some polishing, some bug fixes. And over time, it was just this constant thing on the backbone That there's always like, or people saying, like, Blender changes too fast, I can't keep up. That's a good thing, and that's not going to change. Blender, which is keep happening at the same pace, a, re a new release every three, four months, that's uh, what, what we are doing now. But the idea is that every few releases, there is one that is going to, okay, this one, if you're working on a production, you can keep working on it for one year and two years, maybe. We're going to try it two years at first, see how it goes. Basically, literally just porting the main fixes that we see, mainly security fixes, and try to see if there's, there's always an overlap. So we can always switch from one LTS to another LTS yeah. to another LTS. So it means it's great news for everybody, actually, because it means that for uh, people that try Blender every day, like and compile or share and, and want like the latest and greatest, they're going to have that and even more because developers feel a bit more, uh, a bit that more free to, to, to put things in those uh, versions that are not LTS, um, the ones that are not long-term support. So that means basically, and studios that want to say, okay, I want to have Blender 2.83 and I want to make a film with it and I don't want to worry about 2.84, 5.6 or 3.0 even. So that is basically the goal is to give a, uh, a st people, studios, company that want a bit more reassurance that things are going to keep working and they're going to get updates in, uh, for example, uh, security or, uh, or critical bug fixes, fixes, like a crashes. crash. When the crash is unopened, well, that's mm -hmm. going to be fixed. And then you're going to um, have, two point, for example, 2.83 with A, B, C releases. One thing interesting is that, in a way, we had this in the past. If you think about the 2.8 series as, as a place where we're We, the developers, were daring to break backward compatibility, and people still wanted to keep a reliable version that they knew that could render everything from the beginning to the, to the end. They would have 2.80 on the side, and they would save files back and export to non formats, and they would still use L, uh, the 2.79 as a stable long term release really? because we even did a 2.7a and b, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. So, so not un unseen before, but they just tried to make it more. Official, official, yeah, official. Because right. studios, companies, they uh, they they need something official. They say, "No, this is long-term support. It means that it's going to be maintained um, by longer for yeah. for a longer time." So, what is the first LTS? Is it 3.0? Definitely not. No. The idea is to first 
wrap up the 2.8, 2.9 series and have one, uh, two LTSs with it it's to make sure that before we move to the new targets, we have the, well, let's say the first LTS is planned if things go well. And it's a proposal, of course, but it's planned for the upcoming release even. So Blender 2.83 is going to be the first LTS, long-term support. So when you switch to that version, you're going to, um, and, and you're, for example, working on a project, you can be sh sure that that version is going to be getting all the like crashes or whatever bugs that are critical. They're going to be fixed. So you can continue working with that version. But if you, of course, want to have fun, just move to the next versions. So there is actually a blog post. Yes, on written by Ton and uh, co-written by you. And, yeah, Brecht, uh, and I mean it's been endorsed by the yes. the core development team. So uh, go to code.blender.org to read about it, and uh, let's see how what is what it's all about. So it's called release planning. Maybe this could be called LTS, and uh, we we could rename it later. Maybe rename it, but yes. um, overall, it's it, they go together hand in hand. Uh, new numbering system with the LTS and the proposal. We are really curious about how the well, let's say how the, the, the community, how the existing studios, they react to this. Yeah. Some of them have already been uh, asked about it because we believe it's going to be like really well received. Yes, and absolutely. I some think. companies, they even have been asking for some kind of assurance from the Blender Foundation that this release is going to be maintained for longer. Yeah, like a so, promise. Just a paper that says yeah. we're going to maintain this release so we can, we can, we can use it. So here. The first, uh, you can read about the LTS. The first proposal is that it's going to be every year. or every, And every year there will be a new LTS and every, with support up to two years. So that means that 283 is going to keep getting critical fixes until 2022. Until 2022, yes. That sounds so far from now. <laughs> so 2.83, that, that will be the first uh, release because even though it's big, I mean, we have the response refactor, uh, sculpt improvements, initial uh, virtual reality, volume, initial volume, VR, volume objects. It's a huge, it's a huge. Yeah, volume. So it's, it's <laughs> here it says like it's less experimental. Well, it's pretty big. 283 is going to be huge. It is huge already. So the, but, but still, like your files are still going to work. Like the ones from 2.82, they still work. So it's a good candidate to make it LTS for people that want a long term support. But um, that means that actually, with that, we can move into. Ooh, the moment we establish that 2.8 is going to be all those initial features are going to be maintained for longer. We can also more quickly wrap up the 2.8 series, and before instead of dragging this forever, we can just very quickly switch to the 2.9, and then to the of course 3.0. Yes. Breaking once and for all the incremental That's granular updates we've seen Blender for 20 years already. For 20 years. So that is a big thing. Blender 3.0 is, is going to be big, of course, going to be huge. And it's also like far from, from, not too far from now, we could say a couple of years, but it's, it's, it's big. But also what it means is that after 3.0, we can move to a more normal, regular numbering system. The Blender... Numbering system, everybody argued about it, like saying that the Blender 2.8 should have been 3.0, and this is a change towards that, basically. So 3.0 is a big release, but 4.0 is not going to be in 20 years. It might be in two other years or three other years, and 4. Uh, five, Blender 5 could be in 2025 or so. We do have the numbers there. Why don't we you do scroll it down? Why, why are we speculating <laughs> here? So release numbering. Along with this, I also propose, I, and this being Ton Rosen, Ton Rosen CEO Rosen of the Blender Foundation, I also propose to accelerate a bit our release numbers this decade. I love this. So this summer, we'll do Blender 2.9. Let me full, full, full screen. <laughs> this summer, Blender 2.9. Just let it sit for a bit. But that's the thing. Like It shouldn't... So we're going from 2.83 to 2.9. Yes. And there's a 2.84 in the middle. I don't remember. I don't think so. No, there is no 2.84. So here we can read uh, more or less the, 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 the proposal that is this here. So 
the uh, 2.9, it's a big release because it has particle nodes. It's going to break particle system in a way that you better stick with the long-term release, whatever, however it's now with the 2.83. So it makes sense if it's a breaking release that it... it um, yeah, this is not the traditional canonical semantical versioning. No. That's something very specific. But, but it's, it's inspired on that, definitely. It's a step into that. So summer 2021, that is next summer, and it's summer only for people on the northern hemisphere. We are both <laughs> Latinos. We are from Brazil, Argentina. So we know that don't say summer because it's only half of the planet. Yes, it's only half. For the other half, it's going to be winter. It's super cold, like 15 degrees. Yes. <laughs> So in summer 2021, the Blender 3.0 series begins. Yes, yeah. I go full screen again because it's amazing. Yeah. Blender 3, 2021. Which is not the end of, it's, July, it's not like 2.80 where we worked for years, two to five, two to four years, and then have the 2.80 release. It's the initial release of the series with a LTS coming a few months afterwards. I think it's on the third release of the, of the cycle. Let's, let's look at the numbers. So basically, um, uh, Tom suggests to do minor releases. Three, well, minor. I mean, in, in Blender numbers, it's actually pretty big because 2.7 is, is from five years ago, six years ago. And 2.8, actually, if you look like Blender, <laughs> Blender releases, you actually see, and it's... It all is. the splash screens and the all the screens. dates. Yeah, with all the dates, you're going to see that it's actually... Uh, from 2014, 2.7. So, okay, proposal, one LTS for year, one long-term support for every year with a major release cycles every two years. So yeah. that way the developers can break some kind of compatibility if they want to, and that brings like bigger breakthroughs. And Yeah, of course, again, as an experiment, we're going to see how 2.83 goes. Although for 2.83, we're committed to continue maintaining it. And then this idea of two years support is like a, a ballpark. Yeah. But initial proposal and see how people react. Maybe a company needs support for longer than two years, and then it can that can be discussed as a it separate. It can be discussed, but that is, I mean, scenario. if a, com a specific company needs support for that, then they could. They can probably, probably afford pay for it helping for that. a developer. Because what does it mean? It, may, it means that a developer or developers have to go into um, the the fix that this. That uh, that is needed, the crash, for example, the critical fix. Grab that piece of code and try to merge it with that version of Blender, the the LTS, the 2.83 in this case. It means that maybe the code is different, so you actually have to, you you need to know the code to go back. So that is expensive. And the testing is also very more demanding than what we do at the moment. Yeah. So it might so whatever, let's say new. Development fund comes thanks to the LTS could also help more QA quality assurance. Quality assurance. We nice. can then reflect oh, back That's to why the we're <laughs> like we are dressed up. So okay, uh, I just in two weeks it's gonna be the sixth year anniversary of Blender 2.7, 2.70, and 2.80. So yeah, six years. No, no, six Not, year only. Yeah, it's but, uh, 2014. But then to seven. When was 2.79? Ah, but the 790 it was in 2017, uh, so three, three years, years ago. ago. Oh, because there was an Two overlap, because for 2.08, we started way before. That's the 2 past. 2.8 and 2.9. <laughs> so February, we already seen 2.82. In May, 2.83 LTS. So that's the next release. It's going to be LTS with two-year support. 2.9. Expected in August, September, depends, you know, who knows. Well, August is a nice date because of Seagraph. Seagraph, yeah, the Seagraph release. And this year is going to be in Washington, D.C., the first time in a yep. new city. But we Blender still committed to have maybe a nice booth over there. That's let's hope, let's hope, if uh, Corona lets us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so November, by the end of this year, 2.91, by next, uh, by next year... February 292, and then 293 again, mm -hmm. and then jump. So I, I mean, at that point, at that point, it's it just makes sense to move to 3.0. Otherwise, we are making like up to up to number 03 and then <laughs> jump. So well, it's again the 2.8 slash 2.9 series is a special case. We're just wrapping that up. And if you see, we're always trying to have the releases after the big dates, like after Seagraph, after the Blender conference. Before and after the carnival, so the people carnival. can go on vacation. <laughs> carnival, carnival, these Brazilians. All right, so 
Um, 3.0. Bueno, Blender 3.0 expected August 2021. Which is still has undefined right. goals. That's a separate topic. <laughs> That's next year. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a uh, uh, year and a half. But we do have, because we do have the big projects for, planned for this year. Yes. As Which you can read out here, actually. You can read in the, the same blog post, in the same, in the same page. Yeah. the same page, the same blog. And yeah. we still need to sit together and see what comes after that, and we can finally allow to start breaking things. I don't, I'm not one to tease people, but maybe what if you wanted... Don't, don't tease. Here I said that we only tease official announcements, so <laughs> no... Uh... But it's a big opportunity to start big projects that might break compatibility. Like Vulcan. And now you're teasing. Yeah. I was thinking about USD. Uh, USD. More like deep integrated into Blender. Like replace the Blend file format? No. That's too much. Let's, uh, so the 2020 uh, Blender Big Process you can find on the same blog. Okay, let's move on. 2021 and then 4.0. Blender 4. Blender, who would have thought we would see in, 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 our, in our lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> I, fingers crossed, knock on wood. 4.0 series, 2023. Maybe a 5.0 in 2025. And of course, this <laughs> That's is insane. It's closed just around the corner, but it's still far-fetched. Yeah. Again, we're going to see how people react, how the community reacts to this proposal. I think Tone had still to contact part of the, you know, the current Dev Fund partners to see who, who would actually be interested in that. One thing that should be clear from day one is that the whole idea of the LTS is LTS is still going to be free, available for everyone. That's of course, Blender mission. Of course, it's going to be Blender free. mission for the rest of uh, Blender existence. Of course, Blender is free and open source. But then the idea of that is going to see how you know people react to this if they're willing to help fund this. Is separate, but this is a separate uh, discussion. Not a separate topic. But, but yeah, first I guess and foremost, want to see how people if people get yeah. excited about that yeah. and if that works. And I think it's going to. I think LTS fine. is more exciting for companies and big studios small, big studios. So maybe if there is funding needed for that, they can take care of it. Yeah. Not on the people, but on the, on the companies. But I'm pretty sure we're for the first LTS, we're uh, the Blender Foundation, as it is, is committed to give it a try. And then we see how it goes from there. Yeah. All right. So that is all with this announcement. Let's go into the regular news because we actually have uh, tons of things to share. And it's... Uh, I've heard there's a new brush in Blender. There is a new <laughs> brush in Blender. I just wanted to qu give a quick shout out to this advertisement. Ben and Jerry. <laughs> yes, we need to install an ad blocker here. I don't even buy this at home. I buy... I buy the vegan one. Buy so the, the German one. <laughs> Hagen <and ice. laughs> Anyway, the uh, teaser for Dynamo, it's out. I just wanted to give it a shout out. It's Eevee it's and Eevee. it's amazing. It's so crazy. go find it online. Dynamo Dream is a teaser by Ian Ewart, also known as... Ian Ewart, because he's not lazy tutorial. That was only happened in the last few months, but actually he's been doing amazing stuff way before that. So go stalk him on social media. He did have a, a nick before as Mr. Dodo, 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 Dodo yes. Bird. And so, uh, nice, I think it took him, I think, seven hours to render this whole thing. That's the nothing. Whole thing. That's the nothing. Whole thing. It's a one-shot tracking. It's insane. Crazy, crazy. And I heard there are moths, so it's very <laughs> realistic. All right, so let's uh, move on. Yes, so let's jump into Blender update. So the sculpt cloth brush, I think everybody talked about it. I even made a, a, a video about it on the Blender community YouTube channel. Um, uh, people, I, <laughs> we can see the excitement. <laughs> so I think uh, enough. Actually, if you go to uh, YouTube and you find you, you just search for like, like a cloth brush, you're gonna find. You yeah, already Blender download new cloth brush install. <laughs> so yeah, there is a official video that I made. Oh my god, on the, the third one looks amazing. Uh, yeah, but Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, yeah never mind. Nah, 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 never nah, mind. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Blender cloth brush. I made a video here in the Blender the official Blender developers YouTube channel where I just make the announcement. Uh, many people made videos already, so just it, it's. I think it's uh, over explaining. It's just amazing. A feature that didn't uh, was uh, wasn't announced that was announced recently actually. It's the uh, new setting also for sculpting called hardness. Yes, it's something that you see all the time. It's very uh, very common. So it just made sense that uh, the the brushes in sculpt have it by default because um, 
so before there was the, there was a need for um, like hard coding it in some of the brushes, like the clay thumb, I think had it hard coded, mm -hmm. and now uh, they can all use the same. Um, the same. Oh, the nice thing about those brushes is that now that you're getting close to the Beacon 2 is when you finish adding new features to the Blender 2.83. Next so week? It's March Thursday. 13, yes. It's the Thursday next week is the last chance. If you're a developer and you haven't, okay, I need to hear. If you're a developer <laughs> and you haven't put up uh, your code in for review, or at least, or in Blender Master, then it's going to be part of Blender 2.84. Just saying. And out of the L the first LTS ever. Oh for yeah! Blender. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's more pressure. Yes. The bar just raised. Put all your patches and stuff for 2.83. You know, it's gonna be around for two years. But then my point is that now, that is for the sculpting team, Pablo included, to go back and make sure all the presets and the initial uh, settings we have for the brushes are really good. Yeah. Some of I've been trying some of those brushes and I cannot do the effects I see there. No, uh, some of the brushes, uh, if you're testing them and they don't feel like they should, um, you can like restart your settings, of course. But it's always a good practice to go to uh, brush and reset the brush. This would make it work as expected by the developers. Uh, sometimes maybe they forget to add a new version, so you need to like reset your settings and stuff. But you can do it per brush, which is pretty nice. Next uh, improvement, actually, it's on the uh, multi the here support radial symmetry in multi-plane uh, uh, scrape so it was actually a bug report that it became a feature which makes this branch work much much better it just looks cool <laughs> it does look cool yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can read more about it in the in the here d69 nice oh one next uh let's move another topic mesh or modifiers. The Bevel modifier got an improvement to um, keep or have a persistent um, uh, axis. So before, this is what could happen. It would be uh, completely arbitrary where the direction <laughs> of the, the bevel would happen. So this is the same uh, bevel before, like before this uh, fix. And um, yeah, you can see it's the same bevel, but it looks different. Now, it would always be consistent because it will take the... Um, the Z axis of the, I think the tallest part of the mesh as a as an axis. So it's more consistent. So thank you, Hans, for keeping proving it. You amazing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> fix. So all right, let's move into UI. More UI. So Blender user interface. There is a, a little improvement that it will make life a lot easier for the file browser. So when you open the file browser. Now you can do Control F and it's gonna set the cursor uh, so you can start typing immediately. The search in Blender actually works really well. <laughs> like the the search, this search works really well and it's fast, you know. And 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 I've never used it because I have to go and click here. Not anymore. You can do Control F to make oh, it yeah. work. Maybe should have should have <coughs> should have that in the outliner as well. This is also super F. efficient. It's not the case anymore. No idea. Is it? Oh uh, no, no, yeah. Well, that feature was added by Jack Luke, which is amazing. And what if he could <coughs> <coughs> be watching this? <laughs> we could ask him, but he's uh he's so nice, he's probably uh, gonna, probably gonna anyway. have it eventually, yes. Yeah. All right, so next is a new setting in the user preferences for the theming of the markers. So in the animation editors you can have marker, like it's a marker area. And now um, this marker area got a, a thing setting in the, the previous versions for the color and the alpha. Now you can also change the color of the markers when they are selected or just regular markers. So very nice. It's a patch by Michael Soluyanov. All right, that's nice. So thank you, Michael. And now you can go make fix your your theming, your theming, make it more colorful. You know. Time ago, now I, I um, when I was younger, <laughs> I, with all the theme setting, I was like, no, that's overkill. No, that's overkill. Are you I, kidding? You're one of the theme maintainers. I know. And I love the <laughs> themes and stuff. 
But uh, at some point I was like, that's overkill. Let, let's just try to minimize the num the colors that you have to do and stuff. But uh, when I see people uh, posting their themes, uh, especially people with like uh, visually impaired, like they have, um, maybe they don't see uh, uh, so well. And it's really important to be able to change the color to bright colors, to more, to maximize the contrast. Something that maybe is not useful for everybody, but for an, a lot of people it is. So now I, I'm all in for Adding more theme Every features. Every single option in the theme. Yes. Uh, speaking of another option in the theme, so now in the theme, actually we can see this one live. It's in the um, node editor. So what you see here is a grid, right? Mm -hmm. And by default, this grid it's subdivided twice. So you you see like five units and then a bigger unit. I don't know if people get to see it in the. But it's been around forever. He always had a grid. Right. Now you can get rid of that grid or by the or uh, limit the subdivisions by going to the node editor settings. Um, then here, grid levels. So by default it's in two. You can do one and you're gonna get rid of one uh, of the lines, one of the thick lines. You know what I'm looking at, right? Go zero. The grid levels not, and curving yeah. is not capitalized. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I have a patch for that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you can go to zero and now you have Completely clean, oh. um, gridless. Um, I mean, the, the the snapping to grid will still work. It's just the <laughs> the, the thing that doesn't look like. Another fix, which no one, all five Blender users uh, that are looking, uh, actually six Blender uh, Linux users. You know, I this, this is not really working, right? What we're about to show. This. Yeah. Okay. Just so show it, I'm and I'll show, show you what's it. not working. Show it. It's fine. So well, well, basically, it's a uh, it's supposed to take to take the um, the translated name from the folders. That's for localized. Oh my god! For localizing, so it's actually gonna get uh, documentos descargas or download. Uh, <laughs> descargas. No, you call it downloads. You gonna ah. Oh. Yeah, I know, it's boring. Jeez, boring, <laughs> man. Okay, more user interface. Now there's dedicated icons <laughs> for the. Um, no, but I mean, if you go to the file browser, do you mind going there quickly? Sorry, for the file browser. Yeah, yeah. I think that. You know that everything is grayed out, desktop yeah. documents? I think that bug was introduced. Thanks kind of to that. Set, thanks yeah, to that. Yeah, so. I've also seen it at home. It's a bug. It's going to yeah, be It's heartbreaking. It's, it's going to be fixed. Come on. <laughs> I, always, I trust the developers. So, all right. So next, let's uh, move on. It's a new, the, the colors in the video sequence editor, the strips have been changed. So now they are all sharing the same amount of value and saturation and only changes the hue. That is awesome. Previously, they were all like all over the place, which make for a fun pop style, but it wasn't really, um, yeah. And it's it really good, it's really good. Yeah, so it's very nice. So thanks, Tintwatin, Peter, Peter um, for making this uh, fix. Also, it changed some of the colors to make it a bit more industry standard. Like if you see the Jasmine and text, they actually match other softwares. So it's easier to, um, to recognize at a, at, a, at a first glance. And the other one is just, uh, I just wanted to say a shout out to Jevgeny Makarov because he's made so many little fixes here and there all over the, <coughs> the, <coughs> the Blender UI on things that are not so sexy. You know, I, uh, there are parts of, the, of, of coding of Blender features that are super sexy and it's like gonna get you a bunch of likes online. But fixing glitches when scrolling in popovers, who's going to look into that? Is it a big patch? It's a kind of. Well, okay. he has a few lines. It's all over the place. But, you know, just going <clears throat> and trying to fix those uh, little uh, glitches is very important. And I forgot my glass of water. Do you want me to grab it? No, it's okay. I'll, I will die otherwise. <laughs> you can continue with the live stream. Next, let's move into another section. Look dev or viewport there is an improvement that actually i can show in and this is so nice these i really really enjoyed people have been asking for this uh, for a while actually so in the look dev mode where you can set for example the background to be um to be like the studio or like the all the built-in backgrounds now you can also change the amount of blurring Finally. By default, it was like very blurred. It was like something like this, I think. It was very hard to see anything. And it was a fixed value. And a lot of people, the moment this was added, it's like, can we change it? Can we make it more? We had we had it when, we, when this was first added. 
it yeah. was with no blur at first. Yeah. And it was a discussion. And then at the time, it was a bit complicated to add this as a new parameter. But I always wanted to see this because if it's, it helps, right? To see the it, scale it really, of the scene, to see what's, where the light's coming from. It really helps. And I actually um, linked to this because I like to point out when people say, like, uh, why didn't you add it this time ago? It's just the, it's just the value, it's just change the blurring. And things take time. Some th things are better waiting for because for, uh, what I read here by Clement, mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong, but it's not just like a slider for the blurring, but actually he went on and uh, implemented it in a way that is actually even more, it's faster to evaluate, so it's even better. It's, it's well affected by color space in your scene. That's another thing. And it also is a bit faster because it removes one color space hack. So if you look at the code, it's not just one slider. It's actually a bunch of code that, you know, I, I like it when things are done well. I like to point that out. Speaking of Clément, he also added a option in the image, um, in the image settings, where you can specify if you want that uh, that image to be a full float or half float. So basically, um, 16 bit or 32 that? bit. I have no idea. Uh, we had the this image property before. panel. This option is only this. available on float textures and is enabled by default. Uh, we had float images, but not half float images. Not half float. And I guess it adds up to the memory of the GPU if every single float you have is full float That's precision. a lot of float. Everything is floating. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, move into cycles. Cycles, cycles, news. This one is a uh, change in the way cycles does passes. It's nothing is going to change. Functionally, nothing is going to change, but it's good to share the, uh, the, the update because you're going to find that you're not going to find <laughs> the passes for SSS um, and diffuse translucency in um, translucency, is it? Transmission, Transmission. sorry. In the, um, in, in the passes in cycles. Now they are mixed into the diffuse pass, so it's slightly a bit more optimized and doesn't uh, you don't really lose much. Um, if you were doing crazy compositing, like taking the SSS pass and adding it and or something, they get added anyway now to the diffuse pass. So maybe check that. Everything should work. I ask uh, Brecht, the uh, developer, mm -hmm. and everything should work out of the box with your old uh, compositing, but, uh, composite, but if you see anything weird, go and check the passes. That might be the, the reason why. Also, this matches Eevee. Huh. So now Cycles is trying to match Eevee. Wow. You see? I named it. And I love it. Eevee 2020. <laughs> Too. <laughs> I love how for productions, so even the coffee round, the project that the studio is running here now, it actually uses Cycles, EV, and Workbench Engine. It's crazy, crazy. All and all the, the everything. All right. So another feature for Cycles, which is really nice, and I can't show it because it's viewport denoising, uh, but it was... Um, basically, when you uh, enable the optics denoiser, it starts denoising right away. Like as soon as you enable it and you see some preview on the view on the viewport, it starts denoising and can look a bit funny. I like the painterly look that it has, but it can look a bit funny. So with this setting, you can set at which sample it's gonna do the denoising. So um, by default it's zero, so nothing changes. But maybe you want to only denoise after hundred samples, you know, because you want to because it can look funny at sometimes sometimes. It's because of all the black, which still not solved, because the first samples also have way more black than the final image. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. So maybe that's why it looks so strange. And uh, another fix that I was just mentioning, that there is a uh, CUDA out of memory error that you will get when optics uh, denoising didn't have enough memory. Now uh, optics will be smart and will, will tell cycles, so, hey, I don't have memory, and cycles would be smart, even smarter, I'm going to do all the memory management. So that means... It's gonna keep working even if you run out of memory. And this is by card. this is by Patrick Morse. Morse. Yes, yeah, Patrick Morse from Nvidia. From Nvidia. Yeah. So Nvidia has one, at least one, two. I think it's one developer allocated to you know keep implementing features that are related to what they produce. Yeah. So it's a pretty nice uh, partnership. Thank you, Nvidia, for having developers actually yeah. working in in the the code in cycles. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, is there a new setting? This is in the shading. Shading nodes. Last week I mentioned the new vector rotate node. Vector rotate node. Now there is a new option that was added by Chris, uh, Charlie Jolie, and okay. he um, added this option to invert the angle of the, um, the angle basically, <laughs> so you can invert it. It's a setting that was proposed by uh, Simon that was actually also last week here. Okay. Did you watch the last last live stream? I, I skimmed over it. I I, I usually Heart skim broken, over to see yeah. the <laughs> to see the comments. This week I <laughs> promise I'm gonna make a, a a a short version of of this episode. Last week I promised I didn't promise I mentioned it that I might do it, but I, I didn't. There were so many things going on last week, so this week I'm gonna do it. All right, so. Next, there is actually, I mean, I, this, this is worth another uh, uh, Mario pipe because it's a text editor, text editing in 3D view, actually. How often do we get features there? Never. But Campbell added a new option in the edit here. Oh, it really looks nice, the change. menu. Yeah, actually, I was, uh, um, was going to make a patch to add options here because we don't have any, we have all this room for activities. <laughs> And we could have settings like we could. maybe the alignment. The standard ones like we all know and love. Here, look at this. To align to the center, you have to go like three panels in, two panels. So this could be just right here. Come on. And uh, the option also to toggle and stuff here. So there is this new setting. It's called um, for kerning, decrease, increase, and reset. And there is even a shortcut for it. So alt left and right is going to increase Ooh. the kerning, the spacing between the letters. So nice. I think last time I've seen changes on the text editor, and the text editing was 2016, to be honest. I was learning how to read when... <laughs> no, okay, no, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was very long ago. And last but not least, the, the <sighs> loved and beloved video sequence editor can finally... finally oops, oops, I, oops, oops, I got the wrong... Uh, okay, I, run the, I got the wrong link, but it's just exciting to share that the video sequence editor now supports adding or opening multiple video files. In the same... Yeah, look at you, Ooh. you open, like a file open, and then you can open multiple... Um, yeah, yeah, files are same, that's, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, it's super nice, actually, that, that hasn't been... It's funny how it's a, it's a bug fix, but some, this is borderline bug new fix, feature. new feature, yes. yes. So, all right, time to move into the questions. Oh, Blender. Today. Who has the Blender? Bitcoin mix? Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, so let's go into the question section. I already did too many, too many Mario pipes, so I'm not going to do. I'm a, ah, it could be a grow, uh, 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 oh, level yeah, up. Mushroom. Yeah, a level the, up. Like, look, look, look. Like, that's for the, ver for the new version. This one, it's a, it's a fun one, so we're going to do it like. Like the, the, the star. Okay, no, next. And we leave this one in re on repeat for the whole for the whole <laughs> question section. All right, so let's start. You might want to log in so I can heart the questions. Ah, yes. Uh, maybe I can open this. Maybe it was already logged in. Usually, I, I log in with <laughs> with Francesco <laughs> Francesco's <laughs> account because it's logged in already. So maybe he's logged in here. How can I know if this is incognito or not? It is incognito, right? Ah, the problem is incognito. So I'm gonna sneeze a moment. Sneeze. All right. How? You're it's not gonna sneeze? It's in the recording room. It's a bit of. What? I don't know. Is uh, a bit stuffy. My sneeze at some point. <laughs> be, okay. Be Please don't do it on the screen. <laughs> or let me know so we we make a slow mo and then I go full screen for your sneeze. All right. So uh, and I'm not logged in. I need to. I need to log in. So first, read the question. Hey, Pablo. Yes. Is there any reason why any of the tabs in the properties editor don't have a search bar at the top? <laughs> uh -oh. Is there any reason? I know. Well, I, I know the reason. I mean, it's not, it, it was, hasn't been coded. <laughs> this was planned, actually. If you go in, in, in developer.blender.org, you can see a design task for this. We just, uh, we need, we probably need another UI developer user interface developer in Blender. To, to implement it. Yeah, this actually yeah. was proposed, but it's funny when they, when they say they, any, any reason. <laughs> yeah, like that's any reason why we don't have part, everything in notes? Well, yes. 
But anyway, this actually has been proposed and the developer that was going to implement it is now working on VR for Blender. So if you put, if you ask people around it, like, would you rather work on VR? Uh, or come search? on, this is being fair. He's finishing his Google Summer of Code project. He, yeah. he, I think he started committing today the basic patches what? for building with the libraries and everything. And then the main functionality is going to follow short probably by the end of the week or next week maximum because of become 2 anyways. And then he's going to move to our asset manager. Are you just saying that 2.83 is going to have VR, initial VR support? I'm saying 2.83 is going to have probably initial VR support. <laughs> probably. That Do I have a, a sound for that? I don't know. It, like, I, What sound? It, it, no. no, it's just insane. I don't know. It's a, I, I'm a VR aficionado. That's a word, aficionado. I guess. Aficionado. And Julian's doing great work, and people are testing. They're doing great work testing because there's there's so many devices to be tested. That's crazy. How come? I mean, that makes more now. Okay, Blender three now sounds more feasible. Next, next question. So, the next question is uh, Pablo. Oh, yes. It to be convenient. Also, no, here, 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 also here. <clears throat> how do you decide if something should stay as an add-on? Or if it should be incorporated directly into Blender? That's a very good question. How yeah. do you decide? Um, I think performance. And who decided it? Huh? And who decided it? Who decides? Uh, whoever writes it again, Yeah. I guess. But also it's performance. So some things are, as an add-on, they're easier to prototype, but the performance is not the best because Python is not multi-threaded. So um, you can, yeah, maybe use. Yeah, and there's also that the contributors of add-ons, sometimes they would not bother doing a patch this of you know the non add-on version of the feature. This example what's an old Wrangler. Yeah. So if the but maybe if the developer it's a good start to have an add on, have people testing it and then and then move validate it. the pipeline and I then think move it. Everybody agrees that Node Wrangler should be part of uh, Blender, but I don't think the whole of Node Wrangler. I think there is a future for Node Wrangler as an add on, <laughs> but uh, with other features, more experimental maybe or tests. But things like um, auto connecting and uh, the thing is that it's also kind of a hack, you know. The preview in cycles basically adds an emission node, <laughs> so uh, yes, that that takes time okay. from the. Developers. I see it's similar to the particle nodes. We might still have the anim nodes, animation nodes, yeah. add on living side by side of the particle nodes for some time. There, there's room for both of them. Yeah. But uh, Node Wrangler also adds a bunch of buttons everywhere. It has an, its own panel with a lot of buttons that maybe they, not a lot of them need to be part of uh, Blender. But some of things like Control T for adding a mapping node, that's amazing. I want that also f uh, feature. So anyway, next question is, uh, hello, Dalai. I want to ask about the viewport compositing. All right. People told me that you have mentioned this viewport compositing feature in one of the previous Blender Today chapter. Is that true? It's not fair for you to change the names when asking the questions. If there's a promise tied to it, where can we see its <laughs> state of development? We definitely we already can see the viewport passes. So the render passes in the viewport for both Cycles and Eevee. Yep. There's a first step towards that, and that's all we have at the moment. Again, no promises. There's still talk though to have part of the compositing done in the GP in the like in GLSL for Eevee. Why not? And yep. then you could maybe see in the viewport the final result in real time. But it's still far in the future. Next. Pablo, hey. are there any ongoing discussions, plans among the developers about allowing third-party developers to create their own, their own editors with Python? Oh, that was actually for 2.8 was one of the topics that maybe um, for extending the API basically to allow people to make their own editors and even context oh, buttons. Oh, that, that, like that, even that. Like right now, you can't add your own context buttons here. Right. It should be possible, right? And it then should, this I will think. be like crazy. <laughs> people will start. I do wonder how many add ons people use in average. Uh, Two, three, I, I've seen five. some tabs <laughs> where like crazy, but I don't know. I, I mean, I consider myself a kind of hardcore Blender user, <laughs> and I, I don't use any add ons. I, I ever use my own add on. Maybe that's a bit too hardcore. To make your own add-on, yeah, and then so you only have like uh, one add-on and it's all over the place, like yeah. Amaranth, which is now in 2.83. I didn't even talk about it. I'm gonna should talk about it. We definitely can uh, enable or disable add-ons per workspace. Yep. So it also helps this organization if you have that many add-ons. Yeah. A ton, more than 15 add-ons, Nighthawk says. Wow, <laughs> that's uh, 15 add-ons, a lot. 
Next. Uh, hey, Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Can we expect the mood to rest and undo fixes for 2.83? Huh. 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 I, I, I want to say yes. I know they are working on it. Both developers are in-house here. Bastian Montang for Andu and... Um, Sergei Sharbin for, for Motres. Motres. He's actually committing. If you follow the, the, the commits from him, he's preparing the code for multi-res improvements. So is that something we can expect for 2.83? Uh, let's see. Hopefully, because of the whole test, of course. Yeah. It's hard to tell. You're going to have a stable version of Blender without Motres support or with Undo being as low as it is at the moment yeah. for high poly scene, so hopefully. Yes, uh, I mean, multi-res, is, it was also a mess in 2.7, in 2 but uh, it was just thing, it was, okay, it's there, just let's try and... Yeah. Let's see how it goes, I mean, can't promise, because the undo is already was sent for review, part of this, and I think Bastien is working closely with Brecht, same for multi-res, so we're going to have to basically see how it goes. No promises here. No promises. So, is there any an, uh, any update on this bug? Uh, here's an image. <laughs> you could <laughs> describe it. Come on, we have to open the tab. Uh, I can give it up. It is if you want to keep an if you want to update on it, just add yourself a subscriber. Ah, yeah. You actually you can go to here to the the thing and subscribe here. If you set to subscribe, then you're gonna get uh, updates and emails whenever there is an update. As we can and see, and there's no update. And it was submitted last Friday. Come on. It was submitted on Friday <laughs> afternoon. After Friday, and it's Monday. Any updates? <laughs> Anyways. I mean, I know there are developers working on the afternoon, on the on weekends. And like, uh, you, if you see like Antonio from Grease Pencil, he has a bunch of commits on the <laughs> weekend. It's like, come on, go sleep. Right, next question. Hi, Pablo. Si. The title of the live stream made me jump out of my Pants. That's uh, funny. Three questions Damien has. Okay. First, is it possible to implement Elastic Deform algorithm from sculpt mode as proportional editing in edit modes? Oh, okay. That sounds... Uh, they want it all. Yeah. In a way, we are trying to make the different modes more cross-compatible. Generic. In generic. And whether specifically we can do that, I don't know, maybe... Not, but I don't know why would that be a proportion as part of proportional editing. Well, because it's yeah, it's not proportional. It's like man, it's an edit that maintains the. I don't know. It's a completely different creature. I think the the sculpt should be used more for for more things than sculpting. And you're deforming. I mean, it's yeah. I don't know. Second question. Second question, please. It's it about a feature. <laughs> when you merge two vertex together with different vertex weights. The result is transferred f transferred from one of the vertices instead of the averaging weights. Yes, it is. It's not a bug; it's a feature. Yeah, what to do otherwise? So, we Blender has the concept of, of active object, but same goes for vertices. It has a concept of ac active vertices. Yeah. So, when even though we're merging, there's still an active vertex. Vertex, and I guess that's the one that's going to be the decising the decising factor when it comes to those fe those settings. So, by design. Yes, you can see it when you merge, that you can do a first, last, center, and cursor, for example, when you merge vertices. Next uh, question. Hi, Dalai. Do you know current state and recent plans of multi-res? We just talked yeah, about it. Yeah, we just talked about it. Oh, you got an easy one. Okay, next. Pablo, what do you think about the idea of to infuse instant meshes? Rem oh, my God. Is uh, What? What do you think about the idea of using these... Instant meshes. Very advanced technique instead of quite flows oh. for Blender. What's the license there? Of this thing? Yeah. Let's see. Where is the license? License.exe. What is it? No, it's not an open it's license. GPL? You must follow the copyright. I can't copyright. even... Yeah, if it's not GPL or yeah, MIT yeah, say, or public yeah. domain. It should, it should be public domain. We can. Let's uh, spam this developer. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> let's not spam it. <laughs> but let's... Uh, if it's an open... Um, like MIT... It's possible. Uh, GPL is also possible. So if this was open source, it could be yes. implemented into Blender. Uh, next. So in this case, it's better to get in touch with the people actually writing those code. And code. maybe they can actually be the one contributing to Blender. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I guess it's for the best interest from them as well to, 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 ha to have their feature in uh, such a high profile. Pablo. Yes, see. Is senor. there any news about new quick effects like snow and firework? 
Uh, no, actually, that's a good idea. We well, don't. Firework is going to have to wait for the particle nodes project. So Blender 3? No, 2.9. 2.9. <laughs> it's so, uh, so funny to talk <laughs> already. In, no, for, that's for 2.9, yes. But it's no could come. Maybe this is the kind of thing that the community could definitely contribute. The, the quick effects are basically Python scripts. Yeah, they are Python scripts. Actually, maybe that's a good uh, community contribution yeah. thingy. So yeah, that's this is a Python script. You can actually look in the code and see the Python script that basically just builds a thing. So as no, it should be fairly easy. Um, hey Pablo, is there any hey, plans? Hey, wait, 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 that's <laughs> your high no, Is there any plans to implement <laughs> outliner <laughs> features like for rig layers? No, I never, I haven't heard. I of haven't heard of no no plans at the moment. Sorry. I think the rigging department is uh, like loaded with other features. Maybe I more don't really even know what does it mean. Outliner like features for like collections. I think he, I think he means collections instead of the layer, the old layer system that rigging. Okay. That, we, uh, we talked about that, but but it's I think for the time being I would rather focus on other f parts of animation pipeline, faster um, uh, play blast and other things. Animation layers. Next question. Next question for me for you. Pablo. Oh, hello, geez. Pablo. Okay. Hello. Hola. Thank you for your incredible videos. Yeah, oh. thank you. They're pretty good. Thank you, Arina. Ah. I look forward to see this every single I'm week. Blushing. Oh my god. Danny Husk has two questions. Yes. If uh, I am in edit mode and I press the paint select button, I can no longer rotate the viewport. What's happened? Paint select. Oh yeah, because it's a model tool. It's a huge pain. Yes, actually, it, it's true. If you uh, you can rotate because it's a modal tool. Um, if you actually select the circle selection, this one works, uh, and you can actually rotate. So that is a, a, a feature. Of, circle select is a feature from the 90s. <laughs> I would say really old in Blender, and it's modal. It means that it takes over all your controls for that tool for that whatever you're doing. So it's uh, yeah. At some point, it would be nice to have it switched for the for this. Um, so for the time being, you can do a select circle, and you can maybe assign it to a shortcut. Can it can this be assigned to a shortcut? Yes. Yes. Assign shortcut. So next. there was a second question there, which is which is in the other in page. Here, it's in there, which is can you guys please please disable the default back, back face, face selection. selection. By that I mean I want to select through something, I want to have to enter the X-ray mode, which is completely tedious. I never use another program that works like that. Annoying, blah, 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 blah. Please let us select by default through the mesh if you want. Should be an option, right? In the user preferences, I guess. It Why the default back face? Because there's an the option there. Yeah. And what's the problem with just enabling when you want is because, I suppose, it could be an option. Blender 3, and it's not called Blender <laughs> Alex. <laughs> so, Half-Life 3 confirmed? Say you like that. We talked about VR, might as well talk about Half-Life. Yes. Ha. Ha. I don't know, <laughs> let's ask uh, Val. Send us an index. N oh, 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 are you just... Uh, Send us an index and support OpenXR. That's a nice... That's a big one. They're already like supporting Linux uh, a lot. Steam is... OpenXR, they're really, um, even on Windows, they haven't, they're not supporting. Ah, what the yet. index on, on Linux? Yeah, no, not the index. I want the OpenXR for the VR support <coughs> in Blender. Okay. That's my agenda. Sorry. They are supported <laughs> open uh, supporting OpenXR, Loon says. It's not done yet. Actually, we get someone from the chat saying, that's nice to hear. But is there, uh, but still, we haven't found any public builds or anything. But it's nice because who doesn't love their hardware? I love it. So good job. Val. Next question. Hi, I just like to raise awareness about the tilde base course shortcuts. This character is not universal enough. In many countries, the thing is not accessible through a combination. Hungarian, Alt GR plus one. Yeah, Spanish, Alt Graph four. No, Spanish is Ñ. Is the N with the little colon. In but that. we do try to hard code it so that we actually use whatever key is on the top left corner. On the even next if to it's the not one the tilde, above yes. the tab. That's the idea. That would which be which works idea. a lot of the time, not not always. Not always. So we basically need like all kinds of um, of keywords <laughs> to test it. But that was the idea: is to always have it being the key under the escape and above the tab. But uh, yeah, it doesn't always work. Yeah, so in, in my lap, in my lap, in my laptop, it works on Windows, but not on Linux. Yeah. Ah. 
So strange. So <laughs> just drop Windows. Use Linux. I have a few I minutes. Hi, Pav. Oh, yeah, you have to leave. Okay, next question. Hi, the lie in edit mode. So you answer all of them now from for the last... <laughs> Actually, it's almost time, so... Uh, all right. In edit mode, is there a way to select through geometry without seeing the geometry behind? Is there a way? You want to select through it without seeing what you're selecting it? Yes. Why? Uh... With corner case. <laughs> no, there is no <laughs> way no. that I, I know. <laughs> Hi, guys. Ah, <clears throat> in object mode, but you see in edit mode, that is in object mode what the answer is. By evil. So, hi guys, nice look. Thank you. Any plans on making cloth sim simulations on GPU instead of CPU? No, but there's a uh, improv. We just had last week Sebastian Power about working on performance for cloth. So that's already uh, welcome. But for the big project this year, cloth is not one of the main targets because we want so many other things like hair, new hair system, the volume object, and so and so. So, not at the moment, sorry. But I've seen the, the improvements he wants to make. Oh, was, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a so, okay, now let's answer the ones at the bottom because those are the ones that were written first, just to be fair. All right, this Pablo. One. Hey, Pablo. Hope you're doing well. Are you doing uh, well? Uh, I am. I am. <laughs> okay. I am. Sometimes it's screens that get too Sometimes huge well. and, and performance drops. So we have a big screen, performance simply drops. <clears throat> what workflow would you use to handle big scenes that way? Is there any plans on your side, on Blender's side, to improve the code? To handle bigger scenes better, um, we have we we actually made big big scenes for all the open movie projects, and they work okay. But we just link a lot. We link everything, so the files end up not being not so big. And we also make proxies of everything, so we make a low resolution version of whatever you see on the screen. And caches when it comes to animation. Caches, yes. Don't have the rigs there if you don't know that the animation is not going to change ever. Like the animation is done. Don't have the rigs directly on your uh, on your on your scene. Yes. Just cache it into an MDD or USD now, and then Alembic was what we're using here. Alembic, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, Alembic was what we were using, but MDD also works. So export to Alembic and then um, use it as a cache. All right, it's time to go. Time to go for you. I, I still want to go no, find no, more no, questions. No. So stay tuned. So don't, don't, don't go, thanks yeah. everyone for your time. Carry on the show. Thank you for uh, staying until the end. He has to leave because there is a now the developers meeting, actually. Yes. And give feedback on the Code Blender post. Tom post it there. He's waiting for people to give some, you know, Code thumbs up, part. thumbs down, oh, not thumbs up, thumbs Ups. up or constructive feedback. Thank you all. People are saying thanks on the live. Thank you. Obrigado. Obrigado. Ciao. All right. I'm going to mute you. It's just us, guys and girls. What do we do now? What a show. Okay, now let's do five more questions and then we continue because it's, it's been kind of crazy. All right, that's uh, it's a me. There you go. Hola. So next, uh, five more questions. Number five is by Jamie and hi, Pablo. In the November 2019, we saw the great possibilities of the vector displays node. Unfortunately, the vector displays bake is still not a priority. It is a priority and it's impossible to make it without a paid solution. Is there any news on this? Things there is a it is a priority actually it's one of the like right now the developer of cycles is working on new object types to allow volume objects and uh, hair in the future but it's it is a priority actually to bring the that back to actually if you if you read on the code blog you're gonna see the um, big projects and that's part of it like basically bringing um, AV up the so sorry cycles uh, baking up to you know the level it the, it deserves. Polly Bloom, why have you sit on? Because today we announced Blender 3 and Blender LTS and Blender 2.9 and all the blenders. So it's a good, it's a, it's a very important moment. I'm not going to wear this next week, of course. So let's see. Michael. Hi, Pablo. I'm working currently on a scene with a high particle count and rendering takes forever because of updating objects flagged. It maxes one CPU and takes about 50 minutes per frame. Just rendering takes one minute. Gee, is it possible to make this process multi-threaded? Uh, new particle system, yes, Momotron is, is right. He is, um, the particle system is end of life as of now and it's going to be updated for um, Blender 2.80, for 2.9, the new particle nodes. That's the idea in, the, um, uh, in, in this summer. This summer, Blender 2.9, we are already talking about Blender 2.9, yes. 
All right, let's uh, let, let's continue. Weekend. Salam, Pablo. Salam. Weekend. <laughs> can we have a better performance with shape keys? They can be used a lot in animation or as a sculpt layer in sculpting. Also, looking forward for better multi resin and do. They are coming. And can we can we have better performance with shape keys? Uh, but that's I think. It, what, what do you mean by better performance? Is shape keys is just the state of the mesh. And better performance, maybe you mean in rigging or uh, depth graph evaluation, and that is being worked on as um, as part of the overall optimization of Blender. You know, the focus on Blender for this release and for the next releases is performance. A lot of focus on performance um, because it's needed. Blender is growing a lot, really fast, so we shouldn't look um, miss you know, lose focus on performance. Question number three, I believe. Hello, Pablo. When will 2.83 release? In May. Hopefully in May. Where can you find this news? In developer.blender.org, you're going to see here, Blender 2.83. You click on it, and you're going to go to the project schedule, which is hopefully planned for mid-May 2020. The release, And that is going to be the LTS, long-term support, which is going to have back fixes for two years, but no new features, of course, it's just going to be back fixes. And then we're going to jump into Blender 2.9, hopefully for this summer in this hemisphere, which is August, hopefully, Seagraph. Now, question number two, Thomas, Paul, hey, Pablo, you're doing great. I'm very grateful for every single, single video release from Blender today. Thank you. I actually been publishing all videos also in the Blender community channel over at the little uh, small plug in um, over at the, the previous Blender Today channel. I had a question, probably disguised as a feature request. Hmm, sneaky. What would it be possible to create an add-on? Would it be possible to create an add-on that allows you to copy paste images from the internet into the Blender viewport? I know that you can left click drag images from your desktop, but it would be nice to get it. Yes, um, it I think it would be possible um, but you need to have like a browser basically built in. You need to know where you're getting the pictures. But yeah, it's possible. The Python API can do all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. Last question, I think. Okay, let's do, do two more. So, morning, Pablo. Is shaping up 2.83 is shaping up to be a real banger? Any decisions on animation 2020? Also, would the foundation, consider working with Cascader physics based animation software to help implement each other? into their workflow. I highly suggest the foundation try to talk with them and I asked them and they said they will work with you guys. Um, they, uh, well, I mean, the source is open so they, they can just go ahead and start implementing, I think. The foundation or like Blender itself at the moment has a very clear uh, focus on what to, um, to, to implement for the big projects 2020, which we can see on the code blog. If it loads, if people didn't hack it to death, yes, you can see here the big projects. There is already big projects, Gris Pencil Refactor, Sculpt Mode, and the new 20, um, 2025, Blender 2025 uh, planning. And the last question, hey, Pablo, give Evie some love. <laughs> Evie is getting all the love in the world. Evie, Gris Pencil, Evie, like, Evie, Gris Pencil, Look Dev now, everything is like part of this big love um, uh, track. And the last, okay, the last question. Hi, Pablo, which UV features are you planning in 2.83? There's no plans for that, as far as I know, for 2.83, but you never know. Maybe there, I mean, there is still 10, 10 days, 11 days left for developers to add new features and submit patches for review. So maybe, maybe we can, we can have that. Um, but yeah, no, there, there's no development as far as I know. So let's see how people are commenting. This is good news, big news, great news. Why not Blender year and yeah, it could be, but uh, isn't it less fun? With like, which one is uh, the LTS? Uh, yeah, could be, but you know, Blender having it every three months is kind of um, yeah. I love the LTS. So people are very, very positive. I was expecting at least. Maybe people making um, um, maybe documentation, you know, at least there are people like writing books about Blender 2.8 and there will be Blender 2.9 in a few months. So that's what I was more worried about and everybody. So let's, 
let's see how it goes. Give us our feedback, please. Let, let us know how it goes. It's a big, big change, and it's uh, even bigger because it means that finally we're going to be moving into a more uh, normal, or ex more like... Yeah, normal kind of versioning numbering in Blender. Finally, no more this 281 that is completely <laughs> different from 2.83 and it's just the one number. So that is a good thing for everybody. All right, so let's uh, let's call it a day. It's been a pleasure to hang out with you today to give you this uh, amazing breaking news. It's just, uh, I don't know, I've been using blender for 18 years now and being you know, here saying hey there is blender 3 coming in a few couple years next year it's just just mind-blowing so it's a big pleasure and i'm really happy that you also are taking it uh, in a good way blender is made by you made by the community made by like the, the jump that blender got in the last few months uh, years with the blender development fund is huge and uh, let's let's keep moving moving forward i will talk to you and see you next week let's do it right let's uh 9th of march next week we can expect the grease pencil refactor that should be in and there may be the new object types for like volume to support open vdv in blender as a kind of object it's, it's my, to, next week is going to be insane so stay tuned for an update i will try to make the 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 um, the recap video here on this channel so subscribe if you want to know more and i will see you again in the next video five four three two one no warning sorry it's been a pleasure see you next week same place same time on blender today bye